everybody! Welcome back to Cat Friend Beauty. Today, we're going to be talking about how bad my nails are! No, but seriously, if you see them throughout the video, I am very sorry. Shout out to the Ninja Blender. You really, really are sharp. Okay, so let's get serious. Today, I'm actually very excited to do a first impression and a review with you. This is on a foundation I'm sure you've seen from the tag. I am going to be going over how this foundation goes on, my first impressions, what I think of it, the price, and I think what I'm going to do is compare it to a drugstore makeup. I had to go to Ulta. And I'm sure a lot of you ladies are very familiar with this little pink bag. Maybe yours are a little bigger. Mm-hmm. Problem shopper. I was able to find my shade in the Lorac Sheer Perfection Foundation. They're in the store if you've never been in Ulta. One, that's a crime. And two, they have testers for absolutely everything in the store. And I think that is amazing. When I was in the store and I did see the Lorac Perfection Foundation, it was out of the box. So just looking at the box really quickly, my first impression is that I think it's straight to the point and that's what I like. I don't like to be looking at something for a while and not know what it is. I think the front gets straight to the point and that is a thumbs up from me. I'm just going to open the box to show you what I saw in the store. What the hell? What is this, dummy proof? Oh. You rich people open your stuff from the bottom. <laughs> us drugstore gals, they just give us the damn bottle and we're ready to go in with it. So this is the beautiful foundation. I think this is a gorgeous bottle. It came to $36.38. So yes, I know the $34 might seem a little pricey to some of you. For a 1.2 fluid ounce container, you are getting a lot of foundation. And I saw that the littlest bit went the longest way. I was swatching a few colors onto my hand. Now I know that is not the most recommended way to find your skin color. However, I do not use the back of my hand because a lot of foundations nowadays will put SPF in their formula. So our faces are not getting as much sun or light or tan as the rest of our bodies. Obviously it's not going on your wrist and you can see that there is a big difference. However, I decided that I think my palm is the closest color to my face right here and that really gives me a close shade. Mine is the PS6 and this is the medium tan. When it came to picking a color out, I did find that from the light shades all the way down to the dark shades were very, very different. However, the closer you got to the center of the color spectrum, they started to get very similar. I, I was sitting there with like five of them like, which ones are they? They all look the same. Don't stress yourself out so much about color. Just know that you're in the right range. The color did oxidize on my skin. So oxidize really quick just means that the color changes. Remember that it's gonna either go a little lighter or darker depending on your oils and skin type and so on. So really quickly before we go into trying the foundation on, I just wanted to read the details and how to use it. The details say, perfect and protect with perfection foundation. This oil, paraben, and fragrance-free formula is infused with anti-aging oxidants of vitamins A and E, olive leaf, lemon fruit, and papaya fruit extract to help soothe, nourish, and rejuvenate, while SPF 20 provides protection from UVA and UVB rays to help keep skin healthy, youthful, and radiant. Get a poreless looking, silky smooth finish and achieve complexion perfection with Lorac. It says to pump out foundation and apply using a sponge, brush, or fingertips. Can be applied lightly for a sheer finish or layered for a fuller coverage. Shake well before use. So let me just shake. Oh, my arm's shaking. All right, good enough for me. So I'm going to go in with this foundation. This is my Dream Liquid Mousse Foundation by Maybelline. And this is the shade 70. 70. <laughs> 70 in pure beige. And this one on the other side. So let's see which one works out better. The $36 one or the drugstore $6 one. Alright guys, stay with me to find out. Let's go. Like any other time, I am of course going to go in with a primer. And the primer I'm going to use is my trusty dusty e.l.f. primer. I am just going to apply this all over my face. Just to make sure that this fills in any of my pores. 
and gives me a nice and gives me a nice even base to start with. I usually like to go in with my fingertips so I can really feel where I put the product and where I have it. However, I don't want to risk adding any of the oils onto my skin to mess up the foundation review. So I'm actually just going to go in with this blurring foundation brush by e.l.f. Um, a very, very close dupe to the Lorac brush. Just saying. Alright, and now I'm going to start with the drugstore makeup. I'm going to put that on my left side of the face over here. My free blending palette. So I'm just going to take this clear protector screen that I got from one of my palettes and I'm going to squirt a little bit of this. And just to keep it fair, I am going to use the same brush for both applications. So I'm just going to take a little bit here, dabbing it in and just dragging the product out onto the palette just so I don't put it on very gloppy. Now the Dream Liquid Mousse by Maybelline says it gets a dewy airbrush finish which is pretty similar to what the Perfection Foundation claims it will have a finish like. Alright, and that does it for the drugstore side of my face. On the right side now, I'm going to go back in with my Real Techniques stipple brush and I'm going to put on the Perfection Foundation. I think the pump here is a great added detail to help you not waste your product and really control how much you're using. Come on, look at that. So this is not a type of mousse. This is not really even a cream. This is a liquid foundation. It is so light and airy that it drips that easy. So same thing, just dabbing my stipple brush into the foundation and dragging it out so I don't put a glop of it on my face at once. All right, I'm so excited. Here we go. Oh. I love it. I have mentioned a drag queen technique before about the baking in one of my last videos on highlighting and contouring. However, I don't think we've realized how many techniques we have actually stolen from the drag queens. I mean, they are on stage under bright lights, sweating under wigs and tape. Another technique we took from the drag queens was cooking. So if you haven't heard about cooking before, or if you're thinking about pots and pans and cakes and brownies, please stay with me. I am talking about foundation cooking. So all that means is that you would put your foundation on your skin and you would not blend it yet. You would kind of just put a little bit wherever you apply your foundation and you would let it sit there and cook for about 15 to 20 minutes. I know you're first thinking of the cons, like who has 15 to 20 minutes to let their foundation sit on their face? Now the pros to that side, if you do come across the time to have your foundation set, it is such a noteworthy technique. You let that sit on your face and the heat from your body cooks the foundation. So as it gets warmer, it gets a lot easier to blend out. It will already oxidize so you don't have to wait for it to transform color. You can also see if your foundation oxidizes that way as well. And it's just, it stays on so much longer by heating up, blending out evenly, and going into your pores better. I mean, again, those drag queens are looking hella good still at the end of their shows, not only when they first walk on stage. So we know they have to be doing something right. But enough about that, let me get back to the foundation. As you can see, I actually applied more of the Maybelline onto my palette after I put it there. And in my face, I added more. With the Perfection Foundation, I actually still have a lot left over, and I think I did exactly 50% less of the pumpage. I do think this foundation that was $34 by Laura is very, very nice. It really does have a nice glow to it. It has a nice feel to it. I will probably choose to pick that one over my Maybelline now that I own it and have it in my possession. However, I know what it's like to know the value of a dollar. So if you do not think that you want to go out and buy a $34 foundation, my whole point of this was to say that the Maybelline drugstore one does its job. I just personally think that this might last a little longer throughout the day. Now, of course, if you put on a primer, translucent powder, and setting spray are very important for making your makeup transfer proof. 
rub off proof, hug proof, kiss proof, sex proof. What? Those three things are your best friends if you do not want your makeup going anywhere. All right, I will be right back and I will let you guys know how the rest of my makeup I'm going to put on felt on top of these. All right, guys, I am back and it is 2.13. How about now? Oh, there you go. It is 2.13 in the afternoon. So it's been about 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, uh, 6 hours, give or take a little bit. See how my contour has started to run. That's probably from just, you know, wear and tear throughout the day, rubbing my cheek. Because of that dewy finish and that transfer, all of my product over here is moving around. But I truthfully think on this side, I mean, my contour looks like it has stayed in the spot I put it originally. I mean, a little imperfections here and there, but for over 6 hours, I think it's pretty good. I would not say this covered my blemishes like my acne pimples here and here that great I didn't really have any blemishes on the Maybelline side so I couldn't accurately vouch for any of the Maybelline I wish this would have covered a little more however that could have been probably solved with some more powders or concealers if I would have done a full face of makeup but I don't think it accentuated the pimples to a point where it looked cakey and <laughs> like that horrible Facebook picture you've seen. There's nothing you can do about pimples sometimes. I don't think you see nearly as much shine on this side as you do this one. It hasn't started to crease or anything like that. I think it could go a couple more hours. And truthfully, I don't think you're gonna find any foundation out there that is like 72 hour proof. <laughs> I mean, let's be real. I. I'm pretty impressed with this Perfection foundation. I think it did exactly what it claimed it would do. It gave me a nice silky smooth finish. I do think you could use it for a light coverage to a full or medium coverage. My first impression again was great. I thought the packaging was to the point and very clean, simple, and eye appealing. The texture of the foundation I thought was light and airy, which is nice if you put on other layers on top of your foundation like I do. The price, you know, of course I could always ask for the price to go down, but I think $34 it's pretty reasonable. It's competitive. It's not out of the ballpark compared to other foundations by, say, Clinique, Too Faced, and so on. This sheer Perfection Foundation by Lorac, I 100% give a thumbs up to. If you liked this review on a high-end item for once instead of drugstore-based items, please let me know. I had a lot of fun going throughout the store and finding what I wanted to review, so that would not be a problem if you'd wanted to see more. Please let me know in the comment box down below if you have tried out this foundation and what your thoughts on this one is and if there are any other foundations out there that you think I should try. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Come on. And of course, subscribe to my channel right here. Actually, the button's probably down there. And you guys will never miss another one of my reviews and first impressions. I will see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. 